to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. As Dusty Springfield with Son of a Preacher Man, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's Saturday, the 27th of December. Uh, We're squeezed, we're sandwiched between Christmas Day and the New Year, and this is our special sandwich show. It's the day after Boxing Day. What do you call that day? Uh, Disappointment Day. Yeah, Botox Day. Botox Day. Botox Day. I don't know. But to further complicate things, listeners, we have to admit to you that we're not actually live in the studio. We are pre-recording this show. We want to be upfront and clear about it. We don't want any confusion. No. Because confusion costs lives. <laughs> and when people get confused about whether radio or TV shows are live or not... When people, television lies People start people. dying. It's true. And we want to avoid that, especially on Disappointment Day, mm. this uh, special time of year. So you're all probably feeling a little bit bloated, a bit disgusted with yourselves for watching those films that you watched there on Christmas Day. What kind of films do you think people are watching on Christmas Day? You know, people can watch a lot of filth on <laughs> Christmas Day. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Channel 5. How much do you want to bet Channel 5? Because we don't know just yet, because we're pre-recording this show, exactly what's going to be on. Do you think Channel 5 will put on the strongest erotic film ever broadcast on they terrestrial television? Almost, if anyone knows. time on Christmas Day. Yeah. That would be typical, wouldn't it? It would be typical of Channel 5, surely. If any broadcaster is going to do it, it's going to be 5. And now on Channel 5. <laughs> Sandy Crack. <laughs> it's a beach set adult film. <laughs> um, they won't show that. That sort of business has, has absolutely no business with Christmas. <laughs> Does it? Can you get Sandy Crack on Blu-ray? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to, Look though. It's, the too, detail. it's too detailed. Detail. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, that's shocking. So that's a nice family way of starting the show, isn't it, uh, listeners? Not really, but you started it. I know. It's I finished it. partly my fault. <laughs> On the other hand, maybe you're doing, you know, you, maybe you're listening to this programme after the 27th. Maybe you're even listening to the show on new year's eve itself Mm. and we had our christmas show um before last week of course this is more like a new year's eve celebration right a celebration putting 2008 to bed and getting ready to welcome 2009 exactly and we've got some special guests in the studio to help us uh garth jennings will be here and so will chris salt the salt man assault on precinct 13 ready salted crisps he's the man with the most nicknames in the country some assault somersault it's a never-ending list of nicknames he'll be here and we're going to be playing out the show this week as well with a song wars mega mix that's right we found a genius on the internet in the world of youtube and we've invited him here he's come all the way from newcastle that's all still to come and of course great music listeners yes but uh before the great music no that's not true here is some great music <laughs> this is the ting tings with that's not my name that's one of the bands of the year the ting tings and this is it's brilliant one of the tracks of the year here we go that's the ting tings with that's not my name one of the records of the year right absolutely yeah that's you the got sound that record? of that's the sound of young britain created by a couple of people in their late 20s have you got that record i do have that record i listened to the whole record once is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like one of the... Well, it reminded me of the sort of thing that we... You know, the kind of thing that is fun to listen to. A bit of disposable pop that very much crystallises mm. a moment of your youthful musical life. And for many people, it'll be the soundtrack of a wonderful year. For me, it was an inconsequential piece of uh, bottom fluff <laughs> that I will never be bothered with again. But it meant a huge amount to a lot of people who will one day be leading this great country of ours. Now, listeners, you just heard the, <laughs> the, the, the heartwarming giggle of uh, Garth Jennings yeah. there, who's entered the studio. Hello, Garth. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Why, oh, I can't just sound like a normal person uh, it's fine to giggle it's stupid good. giggles people love the giggles it's man it's nearly new year and you've got post christmas hysteria that's what it is that's right uh, and it's a fun time of year and we're sandwiched as we record this show between two studios here at the big british castle and one of which contains beautiful namone and the other of which contains frightening steve lamac <laughs> <laughs> he's so not it's, frightening no, he's, he's not he's lovely he's actually looking very healthy and good looking at yeah. the moment uh but we are also joined <laughs> what are in you the suggesting studio. there i don't know <laughs> just try and move on just ignore it move on <laughs> he just is like an indie vampire sometimes that's all i'm he saying he spends a lot of time 
time DJing and partying. Nos for Octu. Eventually it takes a toll. It takes its toll. <laughs> anyway, in, in the studio right here, though, we're also joined by another friend of the programme, Chris Salt, the winner of our Video Wars competition, uh, who, of course, came to visit us just after he won the competition. Chris, nice to see you again. Hello again, yes. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How was your Christmas? Even though it's not happened yet, we're pretty My Christmas was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I got lots of great presents. Seriously, though, what are you hoping to get, seeing as we are pre-recording this show? More computer games. Yeah. I've already played a lot of computer games this year, but... Hey, Chris, I've got an idea. Many. Uh, later in the show, you and I, we should do we should do a, a computer games roundup. A video right? games, because you and I, I think we play a lot of similar games. Between us, you probably got them covered. Yes, mind so, no. games. We do, we never play mind games. Do you not? No, we're not clever enough. That's my favourite. We kind just of play game. video games. That's what I play with my wife. Mind games. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a Peter Gabriel single. Well, there was a, wasn't there a song called Mind Games? That's John Lennon. You bet. No, he yeah he did a song called mind games there was someone else it was a rock song man games if there wasn't there should have been listen let's get into your free play adam what have you got for us well actually garth got me into this uh this was from the portis head that they released the long-awaited uh release from the head the portises and it's a lovely bit of uh, mellowness from that album called the rip that is both brills and skills portis head with the rip from their third album uh, that was released this year of course in june seems such a long time ago now one of the enjoyable sounds of 2008 that was the month when i had shingles was it? It'll always be shingles month for me. Shingles for I should have bought my shingles photos in again. Oh, we could no. have reminisced. <laughs> that would have been scary. About the pus. <laughs> oh, those were the bubos. Nice. <laughs> Night Games was the song I was thinking of, incidentally. Not Mind Games by Graham Bonnet. Okay. Soft rock fans. Night Games. We are joined by Chris Salt, the winner of our Song Wars competition. Now, in case you don't know, listeners, Chris Salt won that competition. He's a very accomplished... Video Wars uh, competition. ...animator... Mm. And Chris, you did a fantastic Lego bit of animation for our competition earlier this year. Uh, you won in the face of great competition. There were like 250 entries or something. 140. Yeah, 250. <laughs> an unprecedented number of entries. 2,500 uh, entries we got, Chris, and you won. Congratulations. So how has your life changed, I would imagine, out of all recognition? Almost out of all recognition, yes. What's actually happened is, since winning and appearing on the show... Mm. Two video production companies have approached me. No, is that true? It is true. Both of them have said, we like what you've done, and when we have an idea for something that's going to involve Lego, we'll get back in touch with you. Which will only be a matter of time, surely. Well, yeah. I would imagine that you'd have the filthy advertising industry beating a path to your door. I think that the weird thing about using Lego mm -hmm. is that you actually have to get permission off Lego to use it. Did I not box. read that Lego have failed to copyright their brick? They failed to copyright the 4x2 uh, brick. Really? But the little people and all the smiley faces and a load of the other stuff, they've copyright. still got the trademark on them. You know, to me, that reflects a limited imagination on the part of the production companies, because your skills aren't purely Lego-based, are they? I mean, you could pretty much animate anything. They're you could, mostly Lego-based. Are they? <laughs> really? Um, that's all I'm set up to animate. I've got a, a space about a foot square right. on my desk where I do the animating. It's all so going to change, Chris. It's all going to change. Bigger and better things. Bigger Lego men, bigger blocks, uh, bigger tubs. <laughs> of blocks the sky's the limit yeah absolutely man that's good that's exciting you I'm... know we, we were expecting sort of there to be no change in your life so two calls that's pretty good yeah practically speaking there has been no change and have, <laughs> has lego got in, have lego got in touch with you at all um, i'd be so impressed if i was lego i would just say let's get that guy to make us a lego advert they actually this year celebrated 30 years of the minifig which is the little tiny people and for that, they commissioned three special animated films from three members of the Lego animation community. Didn't ask me. Didn't ask the Didn't king? Ask me. What? Oh. The animated Lego king? Boy, it makes Lego. you sick, doesn't Assault it? Salt with a deadly crisp. <laughs> That's, That's outrageous. Disgusting. That's disgusting. Think, yeah, I mean, someone didn't tell them that I'd been on this show, or they hadn't heard about it or something. Who's That's better it. than you, though? Let's invade Denmark. <laughs> Let's smash them. I've always the wanted face. a reason, and I can't think of a better one. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's get them. Boycott Lego, invade Denmark. Is it really 30 years since they introduced the little people? Yeah. It's 50 years since they actually started doing the bricks all together. Really? 
I remember them introducing those little people. Quite clearly, I thought it was a sellout. Because <laughs> they weren't actually made of bricks. Up, up until then, Lego used to make their people out of actual Lego That's bricks. That's right, yeah. And they had square heads and um, it was horrible, square right? hands. It was, it was it, a bit horrible. I mean, it was dreadful. All you'd do, you'd, you'd take the one-unit blocks and you'd put a couple of red ones there and a yellow one on top for the guy's head. That was no fun for anyone. Me and my uh, brother had a whole Lego land in the basement. Mm -hmm. Two big tables uh, put together. It was, uh, I owned half of it and he owned half of it. We had a railway track that went round the whole thing, but there used to be territorial disputes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to derail the train in my area. I had the, uh, the film studios in my half. Yeah, which was just a big empty area. Joe's basically. half was in need of serious regeneration. Mm. Uh, there was a lot of very corrupt <laughs> officials in Joe's half. We had national anthems. For each half of our Lego land, <laughs> seriously, my brother's was what's that song called that goes? Did 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 oh did, popcorn, did, 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 popcorn yeah, yeah, that was uh, the national anthem for my brother's half of uh, Lego <laughs> Unbeatable, land. surely. What was yours? I can't even remember what, what mine was. His was so good. Yeah, that's Lego news, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Should we play some more music now? What have we got? Oh, this is this is a treat. Uh, do you like the shins, Chris? I've not actually heard anything by them. I don't think. Outrageous! You're an indie fan, aren't you? I am. I may have heard them, but just not known that it was them. But. Are they too mainstream even for you? Are you someone who listens to quite weird music? Yeah, I'm quite out there. Right. Musically. Out there. Mm, the tuneful lady men. That's what I like to call them. The shins with Phantom Lin. Joe, you've had a problem with Phantom Hat in your time, haven't you? I didn't have a problem. It's a letter I wrote to the Fourteen Times. It was a joke letter about wearing a tight hat, taking it off, and then being haunted by it. That's right. They never printed it. <laughs> Did they not? <laughs> no, I was really annoyed. That's a shame, because you, uh, you identified Phantom Hat, which yeah. is a real phenomenon. Uh, it's a supernatural phenomenon. condition, yeah. yeah. You know Phantom Hat, right, Garth? No. You're wearing a tight hat, baseball cap, or maybe a little uh, crumbie Oh, I'm hat, with you. And you take it off at the end of the day after a whole day of wearing the hat. You and the hat feels like it's still there. Same for roller skates. When you've been roller skating, you yeah. take them off and you still feel like you should be roller skating. Weirdly, it's not actually... Some people think it's just to do with the tightening of the skin and the kind of muscle memory of the skin. It's not. It's actually to do with ghosts inside <laughs> the clothes. <laughs> it's haunting is your head. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's our special inter-festive show. Nice. Uh, we haven't thought of a proper name to describe the peculiar period, the no-man's land between Christmas and... A New Year's? What could it be called? The Chasm of Sorrow. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's the new Bond film, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we'll be back after the news, but before the news, here's a bit of Q-Tip, the new single from his new album, The Renaissance. This is Getting Up. That was Q-Tip with Getting Up. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news. That was MIA with Paper Planes. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music with our special into Christmas and New Year programme. And we're joined in the studio by Video Wars winner Chris Salt and Life winner... Garth Jennings. <laughs> life winner? Yeah, you've just won generally in life. I have, You're a winner. I'm a winner. Yeah, that's You're, what I'm saying. Yeah, wow, yeah. I love that. Thank you very much. It's all right. We're a couple of losers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's really nice to have you here. And before we were, while we were listening to the news and um, listening to a bit of Maya there, we were also chatting about lego a bit more and about the rivalries that you sometimes get as as youths yeah i was saying to chris we were uh, we were talking about my lego land that uh, i used to have as a kid with my brother and it used to be halved i'd own half of it he'd own the other half and i was telling chris that when we had arguments as children we would take out our ire on each other by smashing up the respective halves of our lego lands i would total my brother felix's lego area the police station the railway station the hospital even even the hospital <laughs> crushed have you no mercy important municipal buildings you're like the joker <laughs> crushed i am <laughs> and chris you were you were telling us about a lego base feud that you witnessed or were involved in i i was present on the scene but uh, i wasn't involved in it directly and this is when you were a kid right yeah it's when i was eight or nine i think some friends br two brothers as with uh, your family, mm. shared a collection of Lego. And we were sitting around building spaceships and buildings as you do. A bit of a disagreement broke out over a windscreen. Right, it's a valuable commodity. Uh, yeah. It is indeed, yes, they're very rare. One of the brothers got quite angry, went off, and came back with a penknife. Shut up. <laughs> a tiny little one-inch penknife, but a penknife nonetheless. And he threatened the other brother and said, if you don't give me the windscreen, I'm going to cut you. Oh, no. my Lord, he's going to give him a little tracheotomy <laughs> there just for the windscreen. That's unbelievable. And they were eight as well. They were the same age. Yeah. I hope the parents quickly stepped in, disarmed the child. He didn't know what he was doing, uh, and, and the situation was diffused, right? 
Uh, the situation was diffused by the other brother breaking into tears. Right, there yeah. you go. That's the only way to fight knife crime. Ban yep. these sick crime. bricks. Tantrums. <laughs> these sick bricks ruining our children's lives, <laughs> turning them into maniacs. Man, I can't remember. I don't think we had that kind of disagreement, me and my sister. Well, it was different for me and my sister because, you know, I wasn't really interested in all her uh, Barbie stuff, you know. There's no question. My sister, me. my sister was pretty brutal. Yeah. Yeah, because I used to pose all my Star Wars figures in proper action scenes on my shelf. So they weren't just standing there, and, uh, you know, they were on display. They were, you know, engaged in battle or, you know, coming to meet Jabba. Ooh. So I'd really gone for it using bits of string and stuff. And if I'd had a fight or an argument with my sister, all she had to do was put her arm out at 90 degrees and just walk the length of my shelf. And that would pretty much reduce me to rubble. No, that's yeah, horrible. Yeah, but I probably deserved it, but it really was a crushing blow when that lot came down. You know what you should have done is glued them there, just to freak her out. Like, one day she would try yeah. and knock them all down, they're all glued into position. See, if I could go back in time, I'd glue a lot of things down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was uh, remembering that the other day. For some reason, the sort of memory of how upset I used to get as a child came back into my head, and this is connected to what we're talking about, feuds between yeah. children and how destructive and cruel you can be. But I remember when I used to argue with my mum, and I used to tell her that I hated her. Mm -hmm. And do you remember getting that angry yes. as a child? Yeah. And it would just destroy your day. Yeah. And it would be like the world had ended. It would be, it would, you know, po there would be a sort of post-apocalyptic feeling in your head. Mm -hmm. And did you that decide you would... right there and then that no matter what they did later that afternoon, you were going to continue to hate them? Yes. And then they, they, they would specialise in somehow... Just making you laugh. Yes, and to this day, oh. I still haven't spoken to her. Because <laughs> like, when I say something, I mean it. I follow through, you know? Good, good so man. don't mess with me, all right? I had this with my son the other day, though. He got in a mood because his mother told him that it was time to go to bed and stop watching How TV. How dare she? Right? So he was all in a mood about it. I just got back from work, and I was like, hey, good to see you. And he was in a mood with me, too. I was like... I didn't switch the TV off. That was your mum, although I fully support her uh, edict. <laughs> there. But listen, how about a hug for, for Daddy? There was no hug forthcoming. Not only that, I was frozen out for the rest of the evening. There was no kiss goodnight, no I Quite love right. you, Daddy, nothing like that. And I got furious about it. Because I said, listen, I haven't done anything wrong here. What about some little chat? I was looking forward to having a chat, mm -hmm. finding out about your day. There was nothing. And he was digging his heels in. The more and more he dug his heels in, the more I got angry about it. It's a very it. important day. The correct thing to have done, right, would have been to just walk away, let him get over it, and then deal with it the next day. I decided to make a big deal out of it. That's a good parenting thing <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> yeah. So I Listen, thought, Scott, listeners, this is exactly how to behave. Go on, tell him, I Ad. thought a brilliant and clever thing as a parent to do would be to punish him for not talking to me. <laughs> so I got him out of bed, and I made him stand in a room until he was ready to be nice to me and talk to me and obviously that didn't work because i th i thought that it would he would immediately crumble as soon as i started uh, you know creating punishment scenarios and stuff but he didn't so i had to follow through with the punishment scenario i couldn't just sort of say you know, I'd put it on the table as a threat. I couldn't just back off Put completely. what on the table? What, a knife? Did you get a what? little knife, a no, little No, I said, I, I, what I put, I, I said, like, you've got to talk to me, otherwise I'm going to have to punish you, and I don't want to do that. I'm going to make you stand next door in the scary room with the light off, okay? And Is no that one... the punishment, to yeah. stand in a dark room? <laughs> yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Really? So that's quite a good punishment, isn't it? It's terrifying. <laughs> well, there you go. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. That was like the ultimate sanction. Have so you got yeah. that from a book, or made it up? Made it up. <laughs> just thought, I don't want to stand in the dark room myself and a child of six would want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well wow. obviously so i felt pretty bad after that I, I was like i can't believe i'm actually going through with this this is grotesque i turned into the worst father in the entire world and i just had to follow through on every one of these threats and and he ended up standing in the on the room on his own just because he wouldn't talk to me it was quite a dark day and then eventually i went down and i reported to my wife what i'd been doing and she said like guantanamo bay well exactly she's been waterboarding she your own said children. um she said wow things have really got out of control up there haven't they <laughs> I was like, yeah, do you reckon? I just thought that it, I, I, I felt like I couldn't really back down, though. I had to follow through with the threat. She was like, no, that's not the case. You don't have to follow through with anything. Why don't you go up and apologise? So I did. I, I mean, he still wouldn't talk to me, obviously. But uh, we made wow. up a couple of days later. But it was, oh, it was horrible. It, it, it did. It, it felt like I was the president of a of a evil... Um, corrupt, corrupt democracy. Right, I think right. by the time people are listening to this radio station over the Christmas period, that's happened the... Right over the country. There's been lots of cases of parents losing control and going a bit too far. Christmas tantrums. Hosing them down in the garden, trying to keep them 
quiet. If, you this know. Was, if this wasn't a pre-record, our text the nation would probably be your greatest Christmas tantrum. Yeah. But it is a pre-record, so it's not going to be that. What a, th- what a wonderful thought, though, to put in <laughs> What a thought. Minds. Here's a free choice from me. This is a bit of uh, sweet soul music all the way from 1996. Do you remember 1996? I yes, do. that was the year of Ringo's, Dealey Boppers and Speed Skates. Correct. Uh, that's wrong, actually. Sorry. It was the year of Tony Blur and us getting on telly. This so is Tony, was. Tony, Tony with Thinking of You. That was Tony, Tony, Tony. What, like T-O-N-I, T-O-N-E, with an T-O-N-Y, accent. I'm never quite yeah, sure. that's right. Yeah. Or it might not be that at all. They were a happening R&B band back in the mid-90s, ni- mig- mid and you know what? They're still happening now in my world. Featuring Raphael Sadiq. Yeah, he was one of the Tonays. You love him. And we used to take the mick out of the Tonays. Yes. They being called Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> but they turned into geniuses. Yeah. Well, they were geniuses, we just didn't realise. Good times, good sounds, good morrow. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and this is our special pre-recorded Christmas Hinterland show. Yeah, we're joined in the studio by two of the individuals this show holds most dear. Mm. Two people we clasp to our bosom. Margaret Thatcher and Ben Elton. <laughs> Welcome, both of you. It's, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Garth Jennings. Hello. Pop video and film directing genius and friend of the programme. And also Chris Salt, Hello. the winner of our Video Wars competition this year, an animated Lego genius. I mean, that's, that makes it sound as if you are yourself constructed from Lego. So I apologise for that sloppy phraseology there. What I meant to say was that he's good at animating Lego. Yeah, good. Well, you 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 covered yourself well there. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to take a look back at 2008. Mm. Uh, an amazing year, full of all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not only have there been events, <laughs> but there have there's been music and movies and new cars and food products and it's been incredible hasn't it chris it's, salt it's been awesome yes what was your cultural highlight of the year chris just to put you on the spot there pick one oh um, pick one <laughs> <laughs> poor old chris i really enjoyed pick one Charlie Brooker's Dead Set. Oh, good there we one. go. That's a good choice. Very good choice. What about? Why don't we focus on movies mm, for mm. this link? It's been an amazing year for movies. Oh, what a summer it was! Everything from Iron Man. Do you remember Iron Man, the big tin man, <laughs> stomping about the place, <laughs> flapping around, <laughs> flapping around. Then there was the big green man stomping around the place and flap, flapping around. Which was the green man? The Hulk. The Hulk. No one remembers yeah. the Hulk. <laughs> I do. How many more Hulks are we going to have to endure before they finally get the message and just leave them alone? But of course, the film of the year, the number one grossing film of the year, and possibly of all time, outgrossing Titanic, is The Dark Knight. No. No, yes. I thought it was Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia, it's surely. Mamma Mia. <laughs> <laughs> Mia. Well, uh, but I mean, you couldn't get two more extremely different films. They are they are polar opposites in many ways. And I hope Mamma Mia was the highest grossing film. If it was The Dark Knight, I'm tempted to substitute the K N with an S H there. Ooh, I would wow. have been really depressed because I found The Dark Knight to be an absolutely miserable experience. And it was one of a few films that came out this year that were just unrelentingly grim did anyone see wanted here i couldn't do that with angelina well they curved the bullets they curved the bullets and angelina jolie just sort of pouts as as his hair won't and looks sort of a glacial some facts have just come in yeah mama mia is not the top grossing film of the year it was in the uk i think what was it that's the weird the dark knight was the number one it goes dark knight at number one iron man indiana jones and the christum of the blah 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 the christum the crystal of the blah 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 Hancock, Wall E, Kung Fu Panda, Horton, Here's a Who, Who, Sex in the City, Mamma Mia, and The Chronicles of Banania, Prince Caspian. And they're all rubbish. <laughs> hey, that's not fair. No, and not all of them. Prince Caspian. Hancock. Here, just go through that list again and do a little pause. Okay, at number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is The Chronicles of Banania, Prince Caspian. Rubs. That is rubbish, isn't it? Absolute rubbish. I saw rubs. that the other day. <laughs> it's a stinker. Mamma Mia, which is extraordinary. Haven't seen it, can't wait. That's on my Christmas list. Am I the only watch. person in the room who's seen it? Looks like it. You people are mad. Uh, Sex in the City is there at number at number seven. I heard that was two and a half hours long. 
Two and a half hours of sheer pain. Horton hears a who? I like that. It was all right, wasn't it? I like the elephant. It was nice to have a character that was just very nice for a change. Mm -hmm. That wasn't- it didn't have to learn anything. Above that Kung Fu Panda, that was brilliant. I didn't like that, that at all. Oh, Garth Jennings, what are you talking about? I didn't, man. I really wanted to, because my children liked it, but I didn't like it. You know, I just re-watched that, and it's much better on the second viewing. I'm not gonna bother of good with stuff that. In there. I'll just take your word for it. <sighs> Shall we have a record as we're midway through the chart? Yeah, let's have a bit of music now. Here's, uh, the Style Council with Walls Come Tumbling Down. Oh, he's absolutely furious there. <laughs> he's pushed all the walls over. That was, uh, Paul Weller and the Style Council from 1985 with Walls Come Tumbling Down. Righteous indignation! This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We're joined in the studio by Garth Jennings and Chris Salt. Chris Salt is the world's top Lego animated filmmaker, and Garth Jennings is the world's top, uh, pop video and filmmaker. And Adam and Joe are the world's worst DJs. <laughs> <laughs> what a combination. And we're just going through the, uh, the hit films of the year, and there's been a lot of disdain dealt out. Nobody likes any of them so far. Well, you started off by saying it's been a classic year for movies. I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> I would say that it's been one of the worst years for yucky, horrible, cynical I disagree. I, I think you're very spoilt, because listen to this top five yeah. of pure, solid gold quality. In at number five was Wall E. I like that. Well, that was good, wasn't it? But it wasn't vintage Pixar, though. It was a little bit. Why wasn't it, though? I still can't work it out. I loved it, but I didn't think. It go it... Because it's so brilliant until they get to the spaceship. Yes. When it's just the two robots, like a silent movie right. in the big uh, that is post apocalyptic amazing, isn't it? rubbish tip. It's like the greatest film ever made. Yeah. And it has a timelessness and a universality because there's no uh, talking and there's nothing contemporary it's like watching a buster keaton film or something mm -hmm. but then when it gets all directly satirical on the spaceship with the fact right. people, it becomes more prosaic right more i agree more with you pinnable down yeah but still brilliant i agree with you too yeah. i mean they're pixar they're treated like gods when a new pixar film comes out yeah like do you re read the press they go they kind of go insane over pixar right. films don't they yeah saying they're like uh you know, the most incredible art form, uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I feel your yeah, pain, with yeah. The, these words? Well, yeah. no, it's because, <laughs> because they quite rightly say that we are living in a kind of animation golden age, you right. know, where people will look back at that string of Pixar hits and they will think, wow, we had it pretty good in them days. Uh, because there's only so long that the studio can carry on churning out that Jur level of quality. Journalists berate, they use Pixar as a hit to stick other filmmakers with. A hit to stick? A stick to hit there you go. other <laughs> filmmakers with. You know what I mean? Because yeah. of their storytelling prowess. Yes, exactly. Like, why can't all films have stories this good? Yeah, I agree. You agree? <laughs> That's the end of my rant. Above that is Hancock with Will Smith, which Haven't I seen thought Hancock. was an old stinky pile of old doggy plops. Yeah. <laughs> Starts very good personally, but then goes off the boil. Right. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is just turning into me being boring about films. Indiana Jones, though, that was a triumphant return to form. <laughs> For the, for the swashbuckling <laughs> Tomb Raider, wasn't it? That was two hours of CG dog plops <laughs> on a scale. <laughs> I loved it. That Garth Jennings has never I, been seen before. In I the have movies. to admit, it's the uh, it's the first time there have been so many of my friends that so didn't like a film that mm. I couldn't go and see it. And one of my friends, who's so tolerant of rubbish, actually left halfway through it, and he's never done that in his life. So I thought, I can't. So it's going to be on my things to watch over Christmas, and I think it's going to be brilliant, because my, my expectations are so low now. Right. I'm just going to be wowed. Salty, the salt man. Jones? Uh, <coughs> I haven't seen it. Oh, and I haven't do? seen it because... I've heard that it is yeah. dog plops. Yeah, you're all mad. It's amazing. Because you're not a big dog plops fan. Uh, <laughs> number two, <laughs> I love man. dog plops. Get it? It's wicked. <laughs> but yeah, I, Iron Man at number two, The Dark Knight at number one, the biggest grossing film of the year. Well, Iron Man, I w was the best of the batch for me as far as the uh, ludicrous films go. You know, I thought that was pretty okay. Yeah. The Dark Knight, I wanted to like for a while, but it was just nonsense. And then when Two Face turned up, I just thought this is the most grotesque film I've ever seen. It was horrible. It's for young people to get over their fear of terrorism, though, that film. Uh, so is that's he, the movie. Is he going to win the Oscar, do you think? Uh, Ledgers. Ledgers. Legend. Heath Legend. Yes, um, probably. You reckon? Yeah. That was... Isn't Quantum of Solace in there? Didn't that make billions of dollars? Uh, it's done very well, but it probably didn't make the end of year list. Oh, uh, because it's, it's still too playing. late. Right. No, no, no. no. Oh, well, okay. okay. Personally, I hope for Film better fights. things. Uh, Joe Films Cornish, any exciting top tips for 2009? No. 
Nothing at all. No. Uh, there'll be some good ones and some bad ones. <laughs> <you know? laughs> like some animated ones, some live action ones. Yeah. I was going to say, I bought a radio the other day in Selfridges and I've worked out a good credit crunch thing, which is if you want to see any of those films, go into one of the department stores where they're playing them all and you can watch all the big films because they use them as demonstration mm. films. And if you tenors. run out of food, try looking through bins. You never <laughs> yes. know what you'll find in there. That would be <laughs> another of God. That's what the Buxton family are going to do. We're going to rifle through some bins, get a little bit of popcorn. <laughs> Stand outside like, Dixon's. <laughs> <laughs> and watch the Incredible Hulk in silence. In silence, yeah. Good times. Here's a slice of solid gold soul from Aretha Franklin. This is Baby, I Love You. Aretha Franklin there with Baby, I Love You. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Welcome to uh, another of our festive, slightly ramshackle shows, which we are pre-recording. It's not actually live, but it's going out in that strange chasm between Christmas and the New Year. Uh, which is always a, a curious time. Do you like that time of year, Jim? Oh, I love that time of year, especially when I'm joined by close friends. Huh? Uh, as we are right now, Garth Jennings and Chris Salt. Good work. Both good pals of the show. Thank you, Garth. And they have agreed to do something above and beyond the call of any sort of duty. Mm. They are going to partake in a regular feature of this show that goes by the name of... It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. And of course, later on in the show, we have listener Craig Moore, who's going to be doing a bit of mixing, live mixing on his computer and decks to some of our Song Wars tracks. But today we have for you Song Wars tracks created by Garth and Salty the Salt Man. Now... We asked you both to do this, and you both very generously agreed, but one of you may have more practice in song-making than the other, right? Garth Jennings, you filled in for me quite a lot this yes. year. Yeah. For which, thank you very much. Oh, uh, it was a pleasure, actually. I and enjoyed you did, it. You did Song Wars songs as well, that yeah. mostly crushed Adam's efforts. <laughs> well, no, he beat me on the first one. Did he? But the second two, I killed him. You killed him, right. But what I'm saying is you were experienced with this... And you like to write silly songs anyway, generally, as part of your yeah. day-to-day uh, yeah. mental health. It keeps me, keeps me off the streets and exactly. level. Exactly, keeps yep. you off the smackety crack. <laughs> you've got, whereas... <laughs> yeah, you've got actual musical skills, don't you, Garth? You can play the piano. Well, we don't and... want to suggest that Chris doesn't have these skills, but what I was getting at is, Chris, it's less called for in your daily life to compose, sing and perform music. That would be correct, yes. You're mainly an animator, you're mainly in the visual medium, you don't necessarily compose and, uh, and write. Do you, do you play any instruments? We're going to find out in a minute. Right. That I have an instrument, oh. <laughs> but uh, can't actually play it very well. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, so, well, we'll go into f further explanations of that, uh, uh, further contextualizations. When we, when we get to the actual song. But let's flip a coin now to see who will go first in this very special guest star song wars. The songs are both, before I flip the coin, the songs are both festive, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I'm flipping the coin right now. And this is for who goes first. Chris, why don't you call it? Heads. Heads to go first. Tails it is. Garth, you're Garth going first. Go first. Do I need to sort of announce? Tell introduce you. your song. Introduce it. Um, this is a uh, recording of uh, a very nauseating nativity play. You know the kind of things you have to go and see your kids in. Mm -hmm. And this is what the children are all singing this year in the nativity plays. Switch on our digit radio and thank the Lord for 
So you've gone down the extreme flattery route, the Christmas flattery it's a good route. Well, well, originally I didn't know this was going to be Song Wars, and I was bringing, I was told, bring in a song <sighs> as a, like, sort of a gift, the gift Man, of music. You don't, need to, you don't need to make any excuses. That, for that is the truth in your song. That was terrific, and that was you singing, was it, Garth? No, that Speed was Tiny up. Children. <laughs> really? No, it was. It was me speeded up. I tried to get my son Oz to sing it, right. but uh, he couldn't really hold it together. You know what you should have done? Made him stand in the dark room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would have sorted yeah. the whole problem out. Yeah, that's where I went wrong. <laughs> it's been too damn nice. So that was great, Garth. So, Chris, how how are you feeling now? How are you feeling during that? Give I'm in trouble. Really? Yeah. Give us a little uh, a peek into your what's happening in your brain there. I don't have a Mac. For a right. starter, I'm a PC person. Right, now we, we should point out that we mostly do these tunes on GarageBand. Do you use yeah. GarageBand? Yeah, although that was just my piano. Right, there yeah. you go. So I'm, I'm not kind of, I don't have a lot of sexy noises to make and turn into songs. Right. So, I used the guitar that I won last year for making a Lego film. I performed, wrote, and composed a song <laughs> entirely from scratch, all my own work. Yeah. And it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet it is. <laughs> What's it called, Chris? It's called The Merry Christmas Song. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Ho, ho, Merry, Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 Christmas. Ho, 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 Merry, Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 Christmas. I've got a gift. The gift is for Christmas. I've got a card. Whoa! <laughs> I've got a cake. The cake is for Christmas. I've got a care. Bro! <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Merry, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas! <laughs> when the tree's decorated, everyone's breath is baited. When the stockings are filled up, that's the end of the build up. When we're opening presents, Opening presents is pleasant. Factories are not included. If you haven't got some in, the kids are gonna get all moody. Ho, ho, ho. Merry, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas. Here we go. T H E S N O W M A N I S H A V I N G A F L Y The Snowman is having a fly <laughs> Ho 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 <laughs> Merry Merry Christmas Ho 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 <laughs> Christmas <laughs> Ho 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 <laughs> Merry Merry Christmas Ho 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 Christmas <laughs> Oh, a fade, going nice for the fade. Fade. Going yeah, for the really. fade. Hey. Now, Chris, considering we have forced you to come to London to join in the show, yep. and we forced you to write a song, and all because you supposedly won a competition, <laughs> which actually, in fact, has opened a massive sluice gate of hassle and trouble <laughs> on your life, and I bet you're wishing you never even entered now. <laughs> considering all that, what a heroic effort. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Oh, it was fantastic. It was Can fantastic. you imagine if, like, people didn't know what this show was about and they just <laughs> turned on the radio? It's brilliant. It's, it's lo-fi genius. Man, that is amazing. Uh, are you familiar with the term outsider art? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think you've created a new kind of art form that's slightly outside the outsider art category. <laughs> <laughs> outside toilet art. <laughs> but that sounds very I don't agree. demeaning, and that's not true. That no, no, just no. A, a Absolutely not. That was good, man. That was good. And am I, I'm right in thinking that you based it on uh, football track. No, Is that no, right? No, no. <laughs> Why would you think that? Why would you, Why would think, you that? think that? It might have been an inspiration. It was brilliant, man. And so, did you learn to play the guitar after you? won it in this uh, Lego making prize? 
I thought yeah, you were the... after you recorded the song. I was going to say that. <laughs> Did you learn the song before or after you recorded the song? <laughs> During. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy on YouTube, Justin Sandico, his name is, uh-huh. who does tutorial videos for learning to play guitar. Right. And he had a competition to make a video about guitars. And at the time I was learning, and I entered the competition and I won. So I've got a nice guitar, a nice amp and everything. Yeah. And then I kind of stopped learning. <laughs> I don't know if that, that came through at all. No, you stopped at a precisely the correct time. <laughs> and I, what I liked about that was the sound of the buzz of the amp. You mm. know, when you do stuff in Garage Band, you don't get a lot of the, those old school analog sounds yeah. that, that, that really take you to the to the time and place where it was recorded. They do have a button for it, do they? Yeah. Well, it's not the same if it's synthesized. I could really imagine you sitting there thinking, "Oh God, why do I have to do this? <laughs> I wish I'd never won that bloody competition." And and I'm glad that comes that through. <laughs> so there we go, listeners. Those are the two songs that are fighting. Uh, you can vote only by email, as this is a pre-record. But send your votes, either Chris or Garth, to adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Uh, that's the email address. Vote either Chris or Garth. And uh, the winner will get nothing at all, <laughs> which uh, is the final cherry on the hateful cake of this whole <laughs> enterprise for you both. But thank you both of you for going to those efforts. That was uh, ridiculously nice of you. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Now it's time for the news. Reckoner there from In Rainbows, the wonderful Radiohead album, which feels like a part of 2008, because that's when it entered the consciousness in a big way, I suppose. But of course it came out at the end of 2007. That's a fun fact. What fun we're having. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We're joined in the studio by Garth Jennings and Chris Salt for our special inter Christmas stroke New Year show. Now, Christmas time is a time for chocolates. That's is true. that not true? And it's a time for a guilt free eating of chocolates. Yeah, that's absolutely right. right. Because of this, the shops do giant tins at very economical prices. Mm-hmm. And personally, because my birthday comes very near Christmas, every year since I've been able to chew toffee, I've had a big tin of chocs. Mm hmm. There's always a decision to be made of which brand to go for, right? The kings of the Christmas chocks are Roses and Quality Street. Yeah. Would you not say historically? I yeah. would think, I always think of Roses as the ITV to the Quality Street what, slightly BBC. more mass market? Yeah. And, and Quality Street, because of the use of the word quality and the fact that the, the packaging usually has a haughty... Uh, old, man, old the English Dickensian old the English, figure, yeah, exactly. Walking along the street, right? That makes them seem walking along the to you. quality street, the street of quality. Yeah, but there's also uh, now there's re- there's uh, celebrations right. have oh, muscled yeah. in, and these are miniature versions of your newsagent suites, aren't they? Well, of course they do them at garage, uh, you know, petrol stations as well, which is right. the best place to, you know, everyone's on their way to Nans and they can pick up a box. Mm, you just mm, go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was the noise of my mic stand. But I've noticed a uh, a worrying thing has happened with roses this year. Right. Do you know the toffee barrels? Yeah. Usually most people, when they eat roses or Quality Street, there'll be a couple of flavours they don't like. And by a few days after Christmas, there'll be just those left in the tin. In, the qua- right? in Quality Street, it is the blue ones. What are they? <laughs> uh, are they Cracknell? Oh, I love those! <laughs> the Sarah Cracknells. Blah. I dislike with a vengeance the anything with a cr- rose, rosy <gasps> cream, with a strawberry <gasps> Absolutely cream. Absolutely agree, it's revolting. What? I'll have them. Blah. 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 The orange yeah. cream. The other the one strawberry. I... The, other, yeah. uh, the orange cream is revolting That's as well. That's disgusting. Any Do you kind really of like fruit flavoured cream. And listen, listen, I'll go further. I will go further. I will say that six months after the sweets are out of date and the orange and the strawberry creams have become crystalline, Solidified. I like them more. <laughs> oh, my God. You're I a freak. You're them. a freak. Yeah. But my point, you know the, uh, the caramel barrels? Yeah. They're barrels and they're actually, the chocolate they come in is shaped like a little barrel, mm. as if it's been freighted here in a tiny little chocolate <laughs> container <laughs> and loaded on by tiny chocolate little Chocolate stevedores. Men. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I... And they, they, they come in foil that's flush to the chocolate, therefore exaggerating the exciting barrel shape beneath. Certainly. This year, no more. <gasps> They're just in normal twists. Wait a second, this is the Quality Street barrels, right? Roses I'm talking about, mate. I thought Quality Street had that as well. No they used way. to have a toffee barrel with a little... Quality Street have the coins. No, they have the, the ra- toffee yeah, coins. The round that's coins. their key. That's their US, USC. No, but wait a second. What does that even you mean? Need, you USP. need selling... Chalky. USP. <laughs> um, 
The, the Quality Street used to have the toffee barrel with what looked like a cigar wrap around the side, right? Yes, that's true. The sort of sausage. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that was like a finger of uh, toffee. No, no, no. Oh, no th those are the two chocolates that Quality Street only You're have. You're talking that it's kind of a, a caramel podium rather than a barrel. But it had... It ha caramel it had, podium. It was wrapped... It was silver... It was golden wow. foil, and it was wrapped in a little... It had, uh, like, a cardboard thing, a, pa a paper... Yeah. It's like the shape of a Rolo. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you're here, Chris. Yes, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. But that was a Quality Street thing, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what are you talking about? There's one in Roses as well. There's a, a toffee barrel in Roses. Yes, there is. They certainly <laughs> used to be, unless I've got my facts wrong. And now... But that would be a first. And they are no longer wrapping them in foil. What are they wrapping them in. Just normal sort of twisty paper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the point of your story? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's a massive upset on the scale of Obama becoming the president, which isn't cause an upset. It's a very positive thing. But my, my God. Yeah. They've changed the foil. <laughs> <laughs> when do the Sony nominations come out? <laughs> we're going to be showered with them, apparently. <laughs> this is going to be a Sony shower. Um, and we're going to be in it. So, uh, are you finished? <laughs> oh, this is classic. Check this out. It's classic, man. Oh, no. This is so classic. Yeah, look at that. It's classic. So, oh. Hey, welcome back, listeners. Adam and Joe here on Six Music. This is a pre recorded show. It's not live. I don't want you to start thinking it's live. Phoning in, wasting your money, sending us emails that you expect an immediate response to, because that isn't going to happen. There's no way uh, that it's physically possible mm -hmm. with the way that time travel is progressing at the moment. But this time next year, it will be possible. They're developing some very exciting stuff over at MIT, some personal time traveling units that should be on the market by Christmas 2009. And uh, that brings me to my next point. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what? Just a sniff. Which was predictions. Predictions for 2009. Who would like to make a prediction? Let's start with fashion. Last year we made a few uh, fashion predictions. Right. And I would like to talk about the world of fashion because obviously it's gripped the fashion world right now. The fashion world is gripped by fashion. <laughs> by fashion. Actually, I was going to be more specific about it. I was going to say that it is gripped by the fashion of uh, around about 20 years ago. I mean, young children, you were talking about this earlier on, Joe, when, uh, before we started recording, you were talking about the fact that people just walking around Teens. in the street teens young teens they look exactly like the absurd poppin jays of 1984 and they're which just which can only mean yeah. that this year uh 2009 what will come back but acid yeah. acid. acid house that was the next thing after that 80s kind of um bomber jacket and tight jeans and trilby hat kind of a thing it's not going to die out though there's another year at least of that stuff don't you reckon? No, but things move so fast people yep. want to be so hip and cool they'll be jumping on the acid or Revival. happy mondays mad manchester style baggy is it all going to go baggy it's, it's got go to hasn't it again. right those floppy haircuts it's all going to come Center round. Center partings. Yeah. Like Anton Deck or yes. PJ and Duncan. Right. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, well, as far as predicting what's going to happen in the rest of this program goes, I can tell you, listeners, that we will be joined by Craig Moore. He is from Newcastle. Newcastle is a place in the United Kingdom. It's in the north of the United Kingdom. Sting is the king of Newcastle. He reigns there with a fist <laughs> of jelly. My God, I'm going to have to cut in here <laughs> just to explain that Craig Moore is a man who did an amazing uh, mix of some of our Song Wars songs that I found on YouTube and we've invited him in the, to the studio to do a live Song Wars mix. We don't know what tracks he's going he's gonna to choose. Ugh. Uh, but he'll be doing that later in the show. Adam's just eaten a dark chocolate mini Toblerone. That was it. horrible. It hasn't agreed with him. <coughs> <coughs> but we'll continue with some more music. Here is Madness, recorded in 1982 on David Kidd Jensen's Radio 1 show, playing Tomorrow's Just Another Day. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music, our special inter-Christmas and New Year show. We're joined in the studio by Garth Jennings and Christopher Salt, Lord Christopher Salt, winner of the Video Wars competition, and also Adam Buxton. Winner of no competitions. Yeah, a digital radio DJ from Norfolk. Hello. Do you know what? Hi, thank you, thanks very much. <laughs> you know what? I'm just thinking, like, I don't think I've ever won a competition. Can that be right? You must have won some kind of competition. I don't think I ever did. Well, uh, do you want to have a little think about that for a while? 
I'm a bit depressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, of course I can't be depressed because any moment now it's going to be New Year's Eve, the happiest time of the year, when you get to go to parties. Now the problem with New Year's Eve is and that it comes a lot too close to Christmas, doesn't yeah. it? You're just all partied out and then society tells you you've got to have another amazing time. Human beings just aren't built to have that much of an amazing time in that short a period of time. So usually it turns into something of an anticlimax, mm. or more often than not, a misery fest. Yeah. How was your New Year's Eve last year? Oh, man, I, I think it would just involve going to the South Bank and watching the fireworks, maybe? Right. And then coming home and going to bed. Well, I heard they were good, though. People that went to the South Bank liked the fireworks. It's a, it's a sort of low-key way to do it. You just wander out on foot to your nearest gathering of people. You can do it in any city yeah. or town in the UK, your nearest drunken rabble, and you just stand amongst them for ten minutes and have a drink out of a plastic cup, then go home and go to bed. Pick any pockets? Uh, you pick a couple of pockets. You've got to pick a You have a fight. Yeah. You know, you push an old woman over, maybe. Sure. Uh, wander down the middle of the street, just shouting Happy New Year to random strangers. I imagine you do a lot of mooning. Me? I do a lot of mooning. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> do. Uh, yes, I do. Because you love it, yeah. to moon. Yeah, I love and to moon. And you know, the thing that struck me about your girlfriend the first time I met her was that she does too. We <laughs> love to moon. We're like a couple of moons. And that's the thing that you have in common. That's what drew you together originally, wasn't it? Was the yeah, mooning. was the mooning. That's nice. I got the norovirus last New Year's Eve, so I wasn't able to do any mooning. What's the norovirus? Don't you remember the norovirus? Noro, I don't. 2007's classic norovirus it was a bit of food poisoning stroke flu that struck down half the country every the the uk ground to a halt because everybody had the norovirus it was an epidemic i got it off some friends who came to stay now i tell you what happened i just remembered my wife she took our children to go over and play with some other kids just before christmas and they were all norovirus up and the mum hadn't even said anything like usually you would warn visitors right you would say especially if there's children involved you would say oh they got a bit of a cold you may not want to come round." no such warning was forthcoming and we immediately got the norovirus in our house and then one by one we all fell and the night of new well new year's eve afternoon i started feeling a bit rough and by the time our guests turned up for our outrageous new year's eve party i was in bed vomiting out my guts <laughs> <laughs> it was awful that's a fun story <laughs> <laughs> So it's what about this year? What's everyone planning to do? Garth, what have you got planned for your New, year, your new Year's Eve? I like going to bed really early. Really? You, you just call the whole thing off? I like New Year's Day. I like, it, I like getting up on New Year's Day and mm. sort of going out for a nice walk or something. Mm. But I really hate the night. Mm. The whole, let's have fun! It's all going to change! Yeah. Um, I hate that. Does your family agree with you? Um, they often do something... I don't know. You I just remain curmudgeonly and stay indoors. Yeah, yeah. Telly, like, even Jules's oh, ho hootenay. Oh, hate stuff. I really you hate Jules's hootenay. I can't deal with it. No, I don't like it. My mum loves it. Hootenay. She was devastated yeah, to find out it, they the recorded it two weeks in advance. Really? She was furious that the I told her. It's like I'd told her Santa Claus, you know. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, pe anyway. the, the, the period to celebrate Pixies has gone by New Year's Eve, hasn't mm, it? Yeah. Absolutely. So we can't have that the jazz pixie jumping around. The hootenanny, and there's also Wogan used to have the hogmanay, didn't he? Was right. it Wogan that did the hogmanay? I think so. Yeah. How about you, Chris? What kind of things do you do on New Year's Eve? I actually do enjoy the hootenay. Mm -hmm. Glad you used the correct <laughs> name for it there. It's important to get Someone's things right. Someone's got a brain in this studio. <laughs> hootenanny. Um, yeah, usually just have a bottle of wine, stay at home, yeah. and just watch Jules prancing and... And mm -hmm. sob. And sob. <laughs> <laughs> and just another and year sobbing. older. And cry and cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, what, the, that's the best way to celebrate That's what we do around our gap as well. Except we get friends around to do it with us as well. We there should be a holiday that's just forced misery. Enough forced jubilation. There should be just a national moan and cry day don't you think that's what life is every other like. day is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right well a good cry doesn't do you any harm i mean it's quite nice isn't it crying day would be good really how get would it all you, out um, how would you provoke the tears well, that's a good point mamma mia battery farming documentaries you just have a misery fest uh-huh yeah is everyone up for this then? i'm up for that <laughs> i'm with you what Joe? day of the week shall we make it oh that would have to be monday what? a monday yeah that's true a whole monday a whole monday you're thinking oh 
I'd this put it on rubbish. Saturday because that would be more depressing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could make it like a regular uh, radio show even. <laughs> 9 till 12. <laughs> Do it on BBC Six Music. <laughs> Good idea. Shall we lift the uh, mood of the nation by playing a little bit of music right now? Absolutely. We're going to have Sam and Dave. This is Soul Sister Brown Sugar. So that was Sam and Dave there with Soul Sister Brown Sugar. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I've got a free play for you right now, listeners. This is from the Breeders album Mountain Battles that came out this year. I found it very difficult to pick out a favourite album this year, though. And when I was asked to do so for another Six Music feature, I actually found it impossible. I was going to go for Oracular Spectacular by MGMT, but mm. Namon bagged that one. Namon, Namon. But also, I've been worrying this year in general, just before we play The Breeders, that maybe my ability to appreciate new music is, is gone. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because I've reached a certain age, my brain is so saturated with affection for the tunes of my youth, you know what I mean? That there's just no room for new music to get its hooks into me in the same way. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're kind of full up. Yeah. No more room. I, d I know what you're talking about. Do you um, think that's rubbish? I don't think it's rubbish. I think as well, when you, when you get on a bit, you can associate every new record with the sound of an old record, right? Right. That area of your musical taste has probably been covered already by another band. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think I do. But it hasn't happened for me because I'm so young. Yeah. And I sort of, I've got a, you know, a, I pulse with the vibe of the street. Well, you always listen to all the latest sounds when you're skateboarding and tagging, don't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, when I'm around town skateboarding and tagging, I do listen to the latest sounds on my MP3 player. My mm. wife has stopped me from tagging. Has she? Yeah, she says it's bad. It's a bad influence on the That's children. Ridiculous. So I'm not allowed to tag, and, and I'm not allowed to skateboard over 15 miles well, an hour. Well, to be honest, man, I've given up on the tagging and the skateboarding. Have you? Yeah, what I like to do is go to Camden right. in really skinny jeans and winkle pickers and a trilby hat and a donkey jacket, mm -hmm. get really drunk, right. listen to a, some kind of raucous band, and then at about three in the morning just wander through Camden, staggering around, vomiting on bus stops shouting things Ooh. it's brilliant you should try it i am gonna I swear. try it. the important thing is to, to lean against a sexy girl yeah and then both to just giggle and fall over hey, and then that puke. sounds wicked it's brilliant you should try it everyone's doing it in camden on i feel Saturday like i've night. been wasting my time tagging and skateboarding <laughs> tagging and skateboarding is yesterday wow you've heard it here first so back to the free play this is the breeders and a very enjoyable mellow track that's got nothing to do with tagging and skateboarding and it's called night of joy it is the voice of the big breed Castle. It is the top of the hour, ooh, that's wonderful. I got so bored with the last hour, I'm glad it's gone. Now here's the new one, it's exciting and it's new. How do you do? That was Cake with The Distance. You're listening to Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. This show is pre-recorded. It is not live. I don't want you to think that it's live, because that, that would be, be a, terrible. That would be a lie. And don't forget, if you've uh, have, uh, only just tuned in, we did Song Wars earlier with our special guest uh, songwriters, Chris Salt, the Video Wars winner, and Garth Jennings, the pop and film director. They both did... Pop director? Yeah. The director of pop. I'll have a go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they both wrote songs for us, and you can hear them by going to our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash six music, clicking on the link... And you can hear both those songs and then you can vote for them by going to adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. And don't forget, later in the show, just before the end, we have a guy who's going to do a live mix of some of the Song Wars songs, Craig Moore. That'll be at approximately sort of ten minutes before the end of the show. Oh, it's exciting, all that to come, so don't go away. But right now, it's time for some more music. And this is... Yeah, this is Sigur Ross with... Ini mer singur vitali singur, which translates as "Within me a lunatic sings." That was Supergrass with Richard the Third. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music, joined in the studio by Chris Salt, the Video Wars winner, and Garth Jennings, a director of many Supergrass videos. Many, one, two, two. Two. I've done two of them. <laughs> Give us some insider scoop on the grass. On the grass. Well, they're the, the, the loveliest people in the world. Which is really boring to say, isn't it? Something but dirtier. Out of all the bands we've ever worked with, mm. they're the nicest. Something scandalous. Uh, scandalous. When we did the last video we did for them was... We shot in Florida mm. uh, at uh, Mermaid theatre where we, we do go. real underwater mermaid stuff and then we did it and we were trying to save the underwater mermaid theatre by doing a little concert that what night. was the name of the track 
Uh, it's called Low C. Oh, yeah. And it's a lovely track. And so we had a little sort of fundraising uh, event where the Supercross played at a local bar in Florida. Well, everybody got so drunk and crazy that uh and and filthy and, and the trouble is i've got it all on video because i was filming it obviously for the video they interfered Not, with the mermaids no the mermaids were i don't know i think the mermaids wanted to touch the grass <laughs> but uh <laughs> stay and, off the grass yes mermaids. keep your feet off no that doesn't work, does it keep your flippers off yes i just think um supergrass are very very attractive people and to mermaids they were super attractive but luckily the grass was strong and somewhere in the jennings hammer and tongs vaults you still got all that footage you oh, should release they that did stuff, the man. mother of all gigs in this tiny mm. bar and i filmed the whole thing and it's absolutely fantastic wow. it really was amazing i couldn't believe i was the standing right next mermaid gig yeah the secret mermaid gig wow coming up we've got craig moore who is a dj who's going to do a live uh, song wars mix for us so stay tuned for that uh, but first here's a bit more music now i'm just unwrapping here a bit of a sandwich it looks uh, revolting well it's delicious look it says on the box oh so it is my mistake it's delicious that's <laughs> it's, actually the brand name it's delicious so it must be and it features roast chicken and stuffing now, those are christmasy <laughs> elements right and i haven't had a roast chicken and stuffing sandwich i used to be a big fan of the roast chicken and the stuffing in the sandwich combo but i was put off it when I received a bout of fairly hefty food poisoning after a trip to see Sunshine with you, Joe Cornish, and mm. Edgar Wright, the film director, and I mentioned this on my blog a while back, but I was sat next to Edgar and I was really starving, and uh, so I brought in a chicken and stuffing sandwich, which I was going to sneakily chomp during the film. But as, as soon as I took it out, I regretted it because it smelled very strongly, right? I can't believe you did that in the and cinema. And it, it wafted around the cinema, and I could see Edgar shifting with irritated discomfort next to me, thinking, what is Adam Buxton doing eating a chicken and stuffing sandwich during sunshine? This is outrageous. He's, he's the worst kind of cinema attendee. So by way of some kind of punishment, I got terrible food poisoning off this thing. As soon as I, like, during the film... I started kind of belching and feeling very uncomfortable. Where was it purchased from? This sandwich? I can't tell you. Uh, it would it would reflect badly. Was it on was it a, a major high street? It was sandwich a major retailer. chain. It was, was one it? of it was one it of the major. Wasn't just like a, a garage or a, or a no, news agent. No, it was one of the major supermarket chains that has a metro branch, right? Mm. And so I purchased it from there, and I got wicked food poisoning off it. By the time I got home. I was already, I had the shivers and everything and went to bed and there's nothing worse than a bit of food poisoning to lay you low, right? And do you find that once you've got food poisoning off a certain food type, you will never return to that kind of food again ever, right? Is that just me or is that you as well? Uh, I know what you mean. It, yeah, it has happened to me. I had the same thing with sun-dried tomatoes, mm. but I'm back on them. Are you back on it them? It only lasted about it, uh, six months, seven months. Right. And I got back on them. Well, I think, when did Sunshine come out? It was, it was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. I haven't had a chicken and stuffing sandwich since then. And I just thought I would do it. <laughs> are you doing it out of, you know, are you looking forward to it? Or are you doing it to get yourself back on track? I'm, try I'm just seeing how, how it feels. But, but so I this is the first one you've eaten since then? Yeah, I haven't taken a bite yet. You're going to uh, do this. I'm gonna do I can't this. believe you're going to do it. As live do this on the radio. Live on pre-record. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is an amazing piece of radio, isn't this it? This is it. This is incredible. What could the results be? It could be instant puke. Instant vomitorium. The minute it touches your tongue, it could trigger an instant puke response. A wretch response, because yeah. there's probably not very much to puke. I'd vomit on Chris salt salty would uh, be so grossed out he'd vomit on garth yeah. garth would vomit and try and stop it but it would blow through his fingers and out of his nos nostrils on all over our producer, producer. Ben, it's like that bit in stand by me the yeah. uh, the vomit a thumb oh. ben, ben would <laughs> immediately you know, um, vomit there's a, on there's the controls a, there's a sort of person who will be who want to vomit even if you talk about vomiting right right there's a word for it isn't there ectophobe or something weird uh -huh. where if you even hear someone else retch it causes you to retch oh i understand that though i think yeah. we don't yeah. doesn't everyone get that when they hear it they sort of pull that face themselves it's like Ew. there was some great retching on i'm a celebrity with joe swash there this year it was great anyway listen i'm going to take a bite you ready yeah here we go <sighs> I'm, i wouldn't Do normally eat so no I don't. <laughs> i'm doing it for the radio talk us through it how does it feel it looks revolting mm, it's delicious chicken and mayo it's delicious <laughs> stuffing <laughs> chicken and so stuffing. this is anticlimactic man are you aware of that well <laughs> yeah it could be though this could be a time bomb because <laughs> at be. any point in the show while. it could just come back yeah because it could go bad you never yeah. know you mm -hmm. never know yeah. 
I was going to pretend to to vomit, but yeah. then I thought this is the big British castle. You can't do can't that. Can't lie. Can't no. lie about it. So instead, the uh, it's just fine. I, yeah, I'm just uh, enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, we're left with the sound of you eating a sandwich. <laughs> when all is said and done, all the niceties are stripped away. Oh dear! A middle-aged man <laughs> eats chicken sandwich. <laughs> what kind of a Christmas is this? It's a credit crunch Christmas. That's what it is. <laughs> Should we have some more music? Yeah, I think we'd better. No, let's not have music. Let's just listen to the sandwich. <laughs> Give us a bit more, man. Give us a bit more. <laughs> oh, yeah, that hits the spot. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news. Right now, coming up after a bit of Dexy's Midnight Runners, which we're going to play shortly, we have the final guest in the studio for this special pre recorded inter Christmas and New Year's Eve show. And his name is Craig Moore. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, I discovered while, uh, while ego surfing, right? Putting the Adam and Joe into Google and seeing what comes up. Part yeah. of my procrastination routine and he had off his own back done a couple of live mixes of the song wars songs he'd done a, a a mix where he'd mixed flight of the concords into our songs and then he'd done another pure song wars one so we gave him a call and asked him to come into the studio for this show and do a live song wars mashup mm. jam type thing so that is coming up after dexy's midnight runners with dance stance <laughs> Right, now, we have been joined uh, in the studio towards the end of our special pre-New Year's Eve show by a very special guest, and uh, his name is Craig, Craig Moore. How are you doing, Craig? I'm fine, thank you. Craig, you're the fruits of my ego surfing. Yeah, everyone knows I like to sit at my computer and search my own name and Adam's name, see what pops up. I do it pretty much all day, every day. And one of the things that popped up was a YouTube video of you doing a mix of our Song Wars songs. Yeah. First of all, with some Flight of the Concords songs. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting for Flight of the Concords, <laughs> that must have been. And then you did a couple more mixes, didn't you? Yeah. Of our Song Wars songs, accompanied by a kind of video of you, but your face is hidden because you're wearing a, a mysterious hat. True. And it's a sort of a top shot, so right. we can't see your face. But what we can see are these two turntables, the mixing machine, uh, and you're going hell for leather, <laughs> uh, mashing and smashing the tracks together. And yeah. it w is that a real live mix that you're doing there on that YouTube video? Basically, I'll do two or three, four or five goes and then pick the best one. Yeah. And that's the convention, isn't it? Because th there's a lot of DJing videos on, on YouTube, and generally the person's face would be n like not featured. Yeah. yeah. Really? That's right, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. Not just shy? <laughs> well, basically, the camera angle was quite bad for someone with a big forehead and receding hairline, so <laughs> I just put the hat on. Nonsense. Are you a DJ by profession, or...? No, it's just a hobby, really. What do, what do you do to earn a living? I'm an AV technician at the University of Sunderland. Are you? Good one. <laughs> He's in charge of all the stuff. Yeah, AV... At the University of Sunderland. You've Everyone got, you've wants got to, to get on Craig. the right side of the AV guy. I know, otherwise you can't get your widgets and sprockets and can stuff. Can I borrow... Excuse me, Craig, can I borrow the um, projector, please? I've got an installation I want to do. Please, Craig, please! What do you say to that, Craig? Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Craig! What if he's recently done some graffiti in the bogs? That's rude about you. Uh, I'll probably um, pass him on to estates. That's more their area. Really? Estates? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? What does estates mean? Uh, they're just people that look after the buildings and stuff. Right, okay, that's very good, very democratic. Now, uh, do you want to get mixing for us, Craig? Yep, Are you certainly. ready to mix? Now, this, is, uh, this is happening uh, for real and live. We've got two turntables here. And what other equipment have you got with you there, Craig? It's basically, it's called Serato Scratch Live, which I use. Serato Scratch Live? Yes, yeah, something like that. Right. So you've got a laptop with the uh, MP3s in it, mm -hmm. and, and those are controlled by two genuine, finally, turntables that have got time code in them that controls the MP3s, right? Basically, yeah, he's just got a bit of software in the laptop which you can control via the turntables. The me modern life's amazing. <laughs> Isn't it, Joss? Isn't it? <laughs> All right, Craig, go for it. Thank you. OK, ladies and gentlemen, here is Craig Moore doing a live mix of Adam and Joe's Song Wars. <laughs> It's time for Song Wars, the war of the songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Song Wars, Song Wars, Song Wars, Song Wars. I'm 
We're dirty robots, we're dirty robots We've come from the past in search of models with slots Our discs are all floppy, it makes us quite stroppy Because we're incompatible when we get the hots Now it's all wireless, there's the connection It's nice to just be scancy even if you get some knots And midway through that, Garth entered, having exited earlier, he came back in, right? That, that was amazing. Come up to the mic, that Garth. That was amazing. I was very much impressed to hear my own little track in there. Thank you. I'm honoured. I've never sounded so funky in my life. Yeah, that was great. Craig, thank you so much. Were you happy with that? Uh, yeah. Seemed okay. Yeah. Seemed okay. Good. Man, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. And have a wonderful new year. Have you got any special uh, New Year's parties to go to this year? No. Can you remember, sorry to put you on the spot, but what's the worst New Year you ever had? 
They're all much the same, to be honest with you. I can't say anyone stands out in particular. Yeah, are you a New Year fan or are you anti-New Year? P- probably anti-New Year, to Everyone be honest Everyone is with anti-New Year. No one really likes New Year. No sane person would stand up and say, you know what's my favourite time of year? New Year. That's a great uh, celebration. Listen, Craig, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Craig. That was uh, fantastic. And are you going to be DJing at any parties over the festive period? You know, do, do you get uh, kind of uh, paid to DJ ever? Did no, I don't actually. No? <laughs> well, may that change. And can you be sure only ever to play our music? I'll be sure. <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Cheerio, Thanks. Craig. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cheers. Craig. There we go. That was a tribe called Quest with Jazz. It's very nearly the end of the show. In fact, it is the end of the show. So yeah. we should say thank you to our special guests, Chris Salt, uh, the winner of Video Wars, who's been dragged ignominiously back into the studio to basically sit here and watch us perform a fairly chaotic program. Have you been impressed by proceedings at all, Chris? It's been interesting to see how the uh, the pre-record differs from the live show. Right. What will you say to your friends when you get back and they go? Oh, hey, what, did you have a good time? What will you say that you wouldn't necessarily say to our faces? <laughs> <laughs> let's drop, let's let that curtain fall and have a glimpse behind it. I still... Can we guess? Even though you drag me in here and make me do horrible things, I do still enjoy it. Hey! hey. Thanks, Chris. Uh, that's, that's not what he'll nice. say to his friends. They'll say, God, it was chaotic. <laughs> and thank you very much indeed for, you know, uh, contributing to the whole experience of the program for your video once again, which was one of the highlights for us of 2008. I really hope you, you have to let us know that if your video company, production company jobs come through, right? Yeah. And if you're propelled... we'll take a cut. We want a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks as well to Garth Jennings, who joined us uh, in the studio for this show. Thanks, Garth. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And to, just we should remind listeners that Garth and Chris performed Song Wars songs that can be heard on the website, uh, and you can vote for your favourite at adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. So thank you very much indeed, listeners, for sticking with this programme throughout 2008. We wish you all the very best for the new year. We can't wait to be back with you here at the Big British Castle. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye.